The preview event was awesome, and we got to see a lot more than I expected, with a lot of hidden easter eggs hinting at the upcoming updates. So let's jump right into the video. Before we get into the video, make sure to join over 400 members in the Mystic Penthouse Discord server to speak with other members of this amazing community. If you would like to join the Penthouse suite along with so many others, visit the link in the description. If you'd also like to support the channel and myself making more content, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button for exclusive rewards. Finally, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, it's completely free and I would love to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers so each and every one of you can help by subscribing, liking, commenting and sharing the channel with your friends and family. To keep this video from being over an hour long, I'm just going to be covering everything new that gets revealed in the event. We first start off with the so called new approach, which by the way I predicted in my latest map video. Bit of an ego boost there. Anyway, we get to hear about new adventures and mysteries. Adventures seem to be the thing that everyone is most excited about and like I mentioned in my previous video, it's going to be Rare's new way of introducing the lore of Sea of Thieves through gameplay and not tall tales. Things that will scar the world and change different locations keeping the game fresh which is 100% the right move. This is done through live events which are once per month for two weeks. We also get a look here at one of the new phantom models taking on the look of one of the servants of flame. Cinematics are now going to be a consistent thing within Sea of Thieves and the first of which is the shrouded islands which shows golden sands being taken by what we now know is called the fog of the damned. They mention special adventures which will be the final act of the season like warzone and many other games and the final act is one which will change the world permanently. And what I think is one of the coolest bits of information from the whole event is how the world change depends on how majority of players choose to act, which I've never seen done before in any seasonal content across any game. Normally we would see predetermined outcomes, but this, this is interesting. We do get some glimpses of this adventure with the soul flame lanterns and mysterious compass, which they may act like a wayfinder of souls in my opinion. Moving on to mysteries, these will be your classic runes and puzzles which you have to use your brain to discover and work out. Captain Falco is having a field day right now. These will unravel some of the most asked mysteries of the game, revealing new characters and telling stories about old characters as well. Interesting to see that they show Shipwreck Bay while explaining this here. Again, it seems like another player dependent thing where we can't move on until one mystery is solved, which is really cool. And you can already tell that 2022 is going to be the year of the player. They also mentioned the first mystery is about a murder of a well-known character in the Sea of Thieves. And I'm willing to bet this is actually Stitcher Jim. No reason why, I just think it's probably most likely. We haven't heard from him in a while, so why not? Season 6 is up next. It looks at sea forts, which are mini forts around the map inspired by different locations. There are six of them around the map with three different types. Wilds have prisons, there are some overgrown ones which look to be in the ancient isles, and then Spanish forts which are in the shores of plenty. These forts look beautiful, especially the Spanish one that gets shown off and makes me want to be able to have my own fort as a pirate on sea as well, but maybe next year. They also mention sea fort captains, which I hope, I hope are new enemies and not just skeletons with a red gamer tag above their head. Sea forts look to only randomly appear for specific players with no world beacon, allowing you to explore them freely without having to look over your shoulder as much. Pirate legend voyages are finally here, and finally more content for the dedicated player base. We get to see what looks like an ancient mask. Uh, which we input veil stones into, similar to the Shroud Breaker. These voyages seem to be different every time, quotation every time, uh, which is amazing. Uh, this is really shaping up to be one of the best seasons yet. They also address Hit Reg, which is never a bad thing. We then get an overview of this year's seasons, and boy oh boy, is it juicy. Season 7 is why I'm most interested in, 
with the new ways to play possibly hinting at the captaincy update, the expanded roleplay and quest types in the season 8, which will hopefully add on to all trading companies, and then season 9, which is the social options. And let's be honest, it's a bit of a break for Rare after all the hard work throughout the year. I hope I'm wrong about that though. Here comes the big news. Rest in peace, my dear friend Arena. We've made the difficult decision to close Arena in Sea of Thieves, and it will be closing during season six. It's pretty clear to us that majority of our players love to spend their time in adventure. For more information about this, check the description for the article concerning it. Belle makes her entrance next to some insane music, which I predicted in the announcement video. And wow, February 17th to start all of this mayhem. It's almost like they're trying to save season five from being a complete blowout. All jokes aside, that is an insane thing to think about. A massive roll of content is coming before season end. We then get a closer look at the Shrouded Islands, which showcases Lorena being a part of these stories, which is very cool. Uh, and the aesthetic of the destroyed Golden Sands looks incredible. Robin is also back with some incredible composition, which I look forward to hearing. We also see a Soul Flame Captain as a new spectral enemy, which some of you keen-eyed viewers may have noticed the Reaper's Mark emblem on his chest. He also gets his own theme, which sounds awesome. The music in this game is just something else. We then see that Belle has stationed herself atop Devil's Ridge, wearing the Pendant of the Ferryman. She's probably going to be our main con point of contact when it comes to the new adventures and events within the game and the war between the Phantoms. Honestly, Rare do seem so passionate about the way they are telling stories in the upcoming seasons and it really shows in this event. Just how much they really do care. Even though sometimes we may not feel that they listen, this event has really revitalized that hope and belief that Sea of Thieves can become full to the brim with content at all times. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, check out the other videos on my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.